The history of astronomy goes back to ancient times. However, until the invention of the telescope, it was limited to studying and recording the apparent position and motion of the sun, moon, stars, and planets. Since astronomers began using telescopes, knowledge regarding the sun, moon, stars, and planets has increased rapidly. With telescopes, much more of the solar system than was previously known has been discovered, including the planets Uranus and Neptune, and dwarf planets like Pluto and Ceres. Telescopes also expanded the known size of the universe, as well as finding planets orbiting other stars. Space telescopes have caused an explosion of the available knowledge from astronomy beyond what could have been imagined 100 years ago. Astronomy goes back to ancient times. Before telescopes, it was limited to naked eye observations, but some ancient astronomers had measuring tools. Ancient astronomers usually tracked the motion of stars and planets. It involved finding the locations of stars during the course of a year and the relative positions of planets. Ancient astronomers is often associated with determining the time for planting and harvesting as well as the time of religious ceremonies. It was also involved in the making and checking of calendars. Much of ancient astronomy also was associated with astrology, which is the pagan notion that our destiny is controlled by the position of stars and planets. Ptolemy was a Greco-Roman philosopher of Alexandria. He was born in 90 AD and he died in 168 AD. He was known for his geocentric cosmology. Here is a video animation of Ptolemy's geocentric cosmology. Note that there are only five planets. That's because Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn are the only planets visible to the naked eye. Here is an illustration of the Ptolemaic astronomy basic elements. It involves a planet rotating on an epicycle, which in turn rotates inside of a crystalline sphere that has this Earth slightly off center of that crystalline sphere. Ptolemy saw the stars as being in the outermost crystalline sphere. This system is an excellent example of a philosophy-driven model that needed substantial additional elements to make it fit reality. Nicholas Copernicus was the Renaissance mathematician and astronomer who developed the heliocentric model of the universe. It put the sun at the center rather than the earth. Copernicus was born on February 19, 1473, and he died May 24, 1543. Here is a video animation of Copernicus's heliocentric cosmology. Note that there are only five planets. That is because Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn are the only planets that can be seen with the naked eye. Galileo was an Italian physicist, mathematician, astronomer, and philosopher. He was born on February 15, 1564, and he died January 8, 1642. Galileo was an early champion of heliocentrism. He was the first known astronomer to use a telescope. As a result, he discovered the four largest moons of Jupiter, Callisto, Europa, Ganymede, and Io. Hence, they are referred to as the Galilean moons. The biggest myth about Galileo is about his trouble with the Catholic Church. The myth is that he was per prosecuted for teaching heliocentrism in opposition to the Bible. This myth is false and originated with the 19th century anti-Christian bigots William Draper and Dixon White. They tried to portray it as science versus the Bible. In reality, it was science versus science. Specifically, Ptolemy versus Copernicus, because Ptolemy was seen as an authority by the scientific establishment of Galileo's day. Also, in one of his books, Galileo had made the Pope look like a buffoon, thus belittling the Pope's office and authority. And this was all happening in Italy at the height of the Protestant Reformation. Galileo's first trial was in 1616. The Pope's authority over Europe was falling apart, and Galileo was yet another challenge to his authority. It needs to be noted that the proponents of heliocentrism in Protestant countries, such as Kepler, had no problems from Protestant churches on this issue. Galileo's work helped pave the way for further development. Kepler's discovery that planets orbit the sun in an ellipse, and Newton's development of the concept of gravity. Tyke was born December 14, 1546, and he died October 24, 1601. He is well known for his accurate astronomical and planetary observations. He is also known for his hybrid geocentric heliocentric model 
Here is a video illustration of Tycho's hybrid geocentric heliocentric model. Tycho's cosmology was essentially geocentric in that everything ultimately went around the Earth. However, it was part heliocentric in that the other planets were seen as going around the Sun while the Sun went around the Earth. In fact, a modified version of Tycho's model is held to by modern geocentrics. However, despite the fact that heliocentricity is taught as fact in schools, it is not absolutely true. This is because the real answer is that according to general relativity, both geocentricity and heliocentricity can be considered correct. This is because according to general relativity, you can choose any frame of reference you want because they are all valid. However, this does not include only geocentricity and heliocentricity, but Mars centricity, Venus centricity, and even Kepler 62F centricity. It is simply a matter of choosing the most convenient frame of reference. Johannes Kepler was a German astronomer and mathematician. Kepler was born on December 27, 1571 and he died on November 15, 1630. He is best known for his laws of planetary motion. Kepler's laws were derived by use of the data collected by Tycho Brahe. These laws were for planetary motion around the Sun. However, they apply to dwarf planets, asteroid moons, and satellite orbits as well. Kepler's first law is that all planets move in elliptical orbits with the Sun at one focus. This was actually a departure from the original idea that planets moved in circular orbits. Kepler's second law is that a line that connects a planet to the Sun sweeps out equal areas in equal times. That is, when the planet is closer to the Sun, it moves faster, and when it is farther away from the Sun, it moves slower. Kepler's third law is that the square of a planet's period is proportional to the cube of the semi-major axis of its orbit. The invention of the telescope is without question the single greatest advancement in astronomy. While the telescope was originally invented to help sailors see distant objects on the sea, it does the same for objects in space. This one step made it possible to see the heavens beyond what the unaided eye can see. Since then, as technology has improved, the telescope has opened up the heavens to study like no other invention has. While he did not invent the telescope, Galileo was the first known astronomer to use the telescope. It also allowed him to discover the four largest moons of Jupiter, as well as many other things in the solar system. Above is a replica of Galileo's telescope. The invention of the reflecting telescope by Isaac Newton was the next major step forward for astronomy. It enabled a larger objective magnifying surface area than could be attained with a lens. Improved technology has led to some very large telescopes, including the 200-inch Mount Palomar telescope, which used to be the largest in the world. With the invention of segmented mirrors, its size has been surpassed by several times. The next big step was radio telescopes, which by looking at the radio end of the spectrum shows aspects of the universe that cannot be seen with the eye. This is the Parkes Radio Telescope in Australia. Space telescopes have produced a giant leap for astronomy. The Hubble Space Telescope and others have opened up unimagined details of the universe. Illuminating atmospheric distortion results in amazing clarity in images and other forms of data. It's the next best thing to going there. Space probes, manned and unmanned, have been the biggest advance for astronomy since the telescope. Unmanned probes have flown by the moon, every major planet of the solar system, as well as moons, asteroids, and comets. With orbiting probes going to the moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and some asteroids and a comet. Probes have actually landed on the moon, Venus, Mars, Titan, a moon of Saturn, and an asteroid. Only the moon has been landed on by a manned mission. All such probes have provided far more information than could ever have been gained from both Earth and space-based telescopes. Astronomy has come a long way from looking at the sky with the unedited eye. Modern astronomers can not only look at the universe with greater resolution, but also at parts of the electromagnetic spectrum that the human eye cannot see at any resolution. This expanded access to the electromagnetic spectrum has shown aspects of the universe that could never have been known only through the unaided eye. The advent of large telescopes and telescopes in space has greatly expanded our knowledge of the universe. 
being able to send probes to planets and other objects in the solar system has done more than even the best telescopes could. Astronomy has literally opened up the universe.